Well, I'm really excited for the preach tonight, guys. Are you ready for the Word? I want to talk to you guys tonight about the ripple effect of some shadow moments that take place in our every single day. The title of my message tonight is called The Shadow Effect. Why did I call it that? I thought it was pretty cool. Um, looking back now, I don't know if it was my best title, um, but give me some feedback later. But I really believe that there are some shadow moments that take place in our life, guys, that can cause a significant effect into your future and the relationships that surround you if you lean into them. Okay? I feel like I got the word tonight from a, a pastor who used to run a great church over in the States. And uh, he gave me a word when I was 20 years old. I was a year into my faith, pretty much. And I was 20 and he looked at me, he asked me a few questions. He said he liked my hat. And, uh, and then he said, hey, Caleb, keep serving faithfully in your church and don't stop pursuing the shadows. There's gold there. He said, God's going to use you in a mighty way, but don't stop pursuing the shadows. And I remember being like, oh, that's a pretty cool moment. That was pretty cool. I looked up this guy. He was awesome. I was like, that was a pretty cool moment. I received that word. I receive it. But you know what? If I'm honest, I walked away going, I don't know what he's talking about. What are these shadow moments that he is talking about? I was new in my faith. I was on fire for God. And I was like, no, nah, I'm running hard for God right now. I'm not, I'm not about the shadows. No, I want to walk into the light. No, I'm, I'm a city on a hill. I want to be light in darkness. I don't know about this whole, this whole shadow stuff. But you know, it's funny, even though I didn't quite understand what he was talking about in the moment, it didn't take me long to realize that God was using so many people around me in like the mundane moments. Like God was doing so many, he was using so many of my mates in just the ordinary every day where I saw my mates just do incredible things for God. You know how, they were used, how God was using them? I think it's just because they had this little thing called faith in the shadows. And they believed that wherever they went, because they carried the Holy Spirit inside of them, God could use them wherever they went. And so we'd be just like chilling at a cafe. We'd be out on the surf. We'd be at gym or something. And I'd see God do incredible things through my friends. I was really like quite reluctant and nervous this time, but we'd see people healed. Like we'd be out on the surf and, and, and we'd be like praying for someone. Like I saw tangible healings because my friends were just bold. Like I'm not just talking about like just feel good moments where there's a quick encouragement and someone's on their way. I'm talking about like we saw bones restored. Like it was crazy. I saw some of my friends minister to people in cafes where they just shared the, the goodness of God. They talked about who Jesus was. And we saw these people come to church on the weekend and they gave their lives to the Lord. Like it was unreal. I saw God use the most, I saw God uh, give the most crazy influence and platform to one of the shyest, most quiet, introverted dude in the church, but he just had faith and God used him. I was so sure, there was no doubt in my mind that God could use some of the most ordinary moments with the most ordinary people and make them supernatural ones. See, I think most of you guys will be pretty well aware. Sometimes there's these big moments in our faith and there's these small moments in our faith. Sometimes we see God use us in huge ways. And then there's sometimes this little gap in between called the everyday, the nine to five, where there's no spotlight, there's no Instagram, there's no highlight reel, there's no like Pastor Child and singing worship and the heavens are coming down. There's no like miracle, crazy fire moments. But some of these moments in our everyday, guys, I believe can be supernatural. I reckon there's gold there if we're looking. There's gold there. The, the places and, and, and the areas where no one else is. And so I want to talk to us tonight about our private faith. I want to talk to us tonight about our public faith. Because let me tell you, you in the private, you're going to win the public. You invest and you sow into the private space, you're going to reap reward in the public. And I'm not just talking about like material things. I'm talking about like fullness of life. I'm talking about like joy in your endeavor. I'm talking about peace. I'm talking about purpose. I reckon, I, I'm, I'm, I'm so convinced that wherever we go, I believe that we can be a weapon wherever we are. I believe that God can use us wherever we are. And so I want to talk to you about our private faith. I wonder what your private faith's like. I wonder what it's like, because I'm telling you guys, I believe what we sow into the private completely overflows into the public space. I really am. And you can tell when someone has invested in the private. You can tell when someone's been away with God, when he's been spending time in prayer and worship. You can see it on their face and you can see when they haven't. And see, I, I reckon, guys, the, the, the future, your future trajectory, it's not just going to be because of your Sunday night church attendance. It's going to be by what you do Monday through to Saturday. I, wanna, I really want to come at you tonight with this, guys, because I'm passionate about it. What you do through Monday to Saturday makes such a difference in the trajectory of your futures. 
See, some of us, we love a good worship session here. We love a good prayer moment here. We love a good feel-good preaching. Then we love just walking out the doors. But what do you do the next day? What do you do on Monday? Because it has an effect on your future. And I'm telling you guys, there can be fullness of life during the week. There can be more of heaven. There can, be, there can be more purpose and more joy in your every single day if you're hungry for it. Are you hearing me? Is this all right? Does some of you feel like you're just going through the motions though? Maybe you feel like it might be in your workplace. It might be maybe just in your faith. You feel like you're just stuck in this stagnant position of not really feeling like you're going anywhere. Maybe you feel like you're struggling in your job. Maybe you feel like you've got no direction in your uni degree. Or honestly, maybe you're really happy where God has you right now. And that's great. I I really feel like God is going to illuminate something to each of us tonight. I really feel like He is. But I want to show you how your faith in the private can actually cause a dramatic ripple effect into your future and the public space where God wants every single one of you. I've got a few takeaways from a farm boy who became one of the greatest men of faith. He was faithful in the shadow moments. He was, he was faithful in the spotlight moments when God had him leading a nation. Do you guys know who this guy is? I'm talking about Joseph here. Now, if you know Joseph, Joseph, he seemed like quite a fun, slightly overconfident. He looked like quite a good looking cat. Uh, he was definitely overconfident, but he started out as a young shepherd and errand boy under his family. And if you haven't read the story of Joseph, guys, there's so much gold in it. You've got to check it out for yourself. It's in Genesis 37. Make sure you go home and read it. But Most of us would know Joseph suffered quite a lot. It started when he had a dream about being in a position of leadership, which made his brothers resent him and then sell him into slavery. Now, it wouldn't have been easy for, it would have been so easy for Joseph to react in anger, to grow bitter, to grow lazy, stop caring about the world around him, but Joseph didn't do that. Every single space where God had him, Joseph did it with his whole heart. The Bible said that, the Bible actually says that success followed Joseph wherever he went. Even when he was unfairly jailed because he said no to sleeping with Potiphar's wife, he was faithful in the shadows of the night when it was just him and her. He was faithful. He was faithful when no one was, was, no one was looking. I think that's a word for someone in here tonight even as well. He was faithful when no one was looking. But you know, God develops his people sometimes in trials and difficulties, doesn't he? See, God allowed Joseph to be a slave and a prisoner in preparation for him to lead a nation. Joseph's dream of of being a leader didn't come to pass for years. His, His highs and lows, the seasons that came past, you know what? They were just a bunch of shadow moments where he was faithful, where God then allowed him to rule Egypt. But where to start? It started in the faithful shadow moments. It started with just shadow moment after shadow moment, training moment after training moment, that wherever he was, no matter where he landed, as tough or as difficult as it was, he proved faithful because he knew that God was with him. As a community, guys, I I really believe that God is wanting us to just open up our, our eyes a little bit more in the every single day, knowing that every decision matters, every action we make matters and it has a ripple effect. We can't just keep talking about being a house of miracles, showing up on Sunday and waiting for God to do something. We can be the miracle for some people in our every single day if we are looking. You know, Genesis 41, it shows us that Pharaoh was searching for someone to interpret his dream and no one could do it. So we turn to verse 14 here and it says this, right? It says, Pharaoh once sent for Joseph. They brought him on the run from the jail cell. He cut his hair, put on some clean clothes, came to Pharaoh. I dreamed a dream, Pharaoh told Joseph, but nobody can interpret it. But I've heard that just by hearing a dream, you can interpret it. Joseph answered, no, 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 not I, but God. What happens here? We see that God gives Joseph the interpretation and Pharaoh puts him in charge of Egypt. What I love about this passage is Joseph wasn't ready. I don't think Joseph was prepared or ready to be questioned by the king, but there was something about Joseph when you read the story. There was something about him, how he was always prepared and he was always ready no matter what came his way. And I believe it was because of his private faithfulness and his, and his private relationship with God that, that helped him. It wasn't his knowledge of how to interpret dreams. 
No, it, it was his faith, it was his confidence, it was his trust in how big his God was. And I think that's a word for some of us in here tonight as well. You might not feel ready, you might not feel prepared, maybe you're nervous about what's to come, or maybe you're not ready for, for what is uh, happening next, but I believe it's not going to be because of your head knowledge that gets you there. I think it's going to be because of your faithfulness, your passion, your trust, your faith in how big your God is. Because sometimes I think, the greatest opportunities happen in the shadows, guys. The greatest opportunities happens when we least expect it. So are you ready? Are you faithful in the shadows? Are you faithful when no one is looking? Are you faithful when no one's around? Are you, do you have a relationship with, with God in the private? Do you pursue God in the quiet still when things are tough all around you? What's your relationship like with the process? Are you content with Maybe where God has you right now in life. Because you know what, Joseph, he was, he was faithful in all of these ways. He was faithful. And look where God took him. Look where God took him. I believe there's so much more gold in the shadows than we realize, guys. There's so much more gold in the shadows. There's gold that comes investing the time, the work, and knowing the value of the mundane in the everyday. Some of you guys, you want to be up here Maybe you've got a big dream and you want to be here, but maybe you're down here and you're not there yet. I want to encourage you on a scripture. James 1.4 tells us this. It says, let perseverance finish its work so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking anything. Guys, we've got to allow patience and perseverance to have its perfect work in us. Do you have a dream to do something great for God one day? I hope you do. Do you want to provide faithfully for your, for your family in, in the future? A lot of us are young here. That's, I hope you do. Do you want to be effective and, and fruitful wherever God places you? My big theological answer to this, guys, is, you know what? Just, just steward with what God has in your hands right now. Be faithful with what God has in your hands right now. Did you know that Joseph, he would not have survived in the pits and in the prison if it wasn't for his faith? Did you know that even when Joseph was in prison, Get this right, the warden actually promoted him to be an oversight for all the prisoners. Even when Joseph was a prisoner, he got put in charge of the prisoners. Like, who does that? That's crazy, right? Talk about stewardship of the little. Stewardship with little guys, it, it's so underrated though. Did you know that God really does work more in the shadows sometimes than he does in the spotlight moments? Who's heard this before? Who's heard uh, someone say this to you? I just want to be famous so that I can influence and impact more people. You heard that one before? I love that one. Because sometimes I feel like the people that say this are the ones who are often doing nothing to help nobody right now. I, I just, sometimes I want to say to these people like, okay, okay, like, but, but what are you doing to glorify God right now? You know, because what makes you think God is going to trust you to tens of thousands of people when, when he can't trust you with the ones and twos right now? You know what I mean? Like, I, that's, that's why I love Trent and Shani. Who knows Trent and Shani in here? We love Trent and Shani. They're amazing, right? What I love about them is they've got a a passion, they've had a dream for a long time to make a difference in missions in Africa. And you know what? They haven't just been sitting on their butts going, God, just give me the platform, give me the resource, give me the money to be able to do it. No, they've been busy. You know where they are right now? They're actually in Africa. They've been fundraising their way to get there. But you know what? Over the past 10, 11 months, you know what they've been doing? They've been running outreach programs here twice a month through the local church, doing small acts of kindness on the weekend and feeding the, feeding the homeless during the week. You know why? Because they want to be effective with what's in front of them right now. And they know the power of the little. That when God can trust you with the little, He can trust you with the much, right? I love this statement that uh, Queen Elizabeth wrote. Check this out real quick. She says this. She says, It's worth remembering that it's often the small steps, not the giant leaps, that brings about the most lasting change. Do you guys believe that God has something amazing for you in your every single day. Do you ever just like wake up in the morning and just go, God, thank you for another day. Another day to serve you, another day to love you, another day to be used by you. Because God's got so much for us in every day. We've got to seize what may seem like the mundane and have faith to believe that God can use us. Because I'm telling you guys, the Holy Spirit is moving more in front of our faces than we realize. He's moving more in the lunchroom. He's moving more at, at your lecture, in your uni, in your university. He's moving more at your sporting club, on the bus or on the train to work. He's moving more if we can just look up a little bit. We don't know what some moments can lead to. I still remember the very first time I started my life group, I led a life group a while ago, and the very first one I led, I remember there was this one guy, right? Oh, life group leaders, you're going to love this here. There was this one guy who would just, uh, he wouldn't leave. 
Like he would stay all night till like midnight just wanting to have chats. Like you know the guy who always wants to have chats after the chats? Like the guy who, who just loves a good late night chat after the life group chats. Like that's why we have life group to have the chats. But he loved to stay and just have chats all night long. And what I love about this guy is, although it was tiring sometimes and I was like, dude, you got to go home. This guy went on to run a life group himself. And he had under, in, in under one month, he had 30 guys attend. And you know what he said to me? He said, Caleb, I love my life group so much. He said, I've been so touched by your hospitality and the way you've invested and you've sowed into me that I had to start pouring into other people. And this guy, you should have seen his life group, man. He was raising young guys on fire for the Lord and it was amazing. But we don't know what some of these moments can lead to. They can lead to long lasting effect and change. You know, because we are a people of faith, I think sometimes uh, we, we can get so caught up with the spectacular, almost like too caught up with the spectacular. Now hear me out here. I believe God moves in signs, miracles, and wonders. Man, I never want to box what God can do. But you know, sometimes there's these seed moments that take place, right? Where we may never see the fruit. We may never see the effect of, of what we sow. And we've got to be okay with that. See, we, get, we can often get so caught up in the extraordinary that we actually miss the now moments. We miss the small seeds, the supernatural moments that can take place in our everyday. We miss sometimes the small refinement that God's even doing in us every day just because we're so caught up with the spectacular or the extraordinary. I love, um, I love just even looking around this room. Like I feel like there's just testimonies all around this place of just seeds that have been sown into, into so many of your lives. I could point out so many people and go, man, I know how you got here today. There was a seed that was sown in your life. And I know, you know, we talk about Pastor Chris a lot and his story. Yeah, you know, he had some fun, maybe, maybe times back in college where they were too fun, where he was drinking and partying and having a really good time. But I don't think Pastor Chris ever expected to be where he was in ministry today, leading the pastoral staff here at City Point Brisbane. It's amazing what he's doing today, where, where God's brought him. But you know, when we look back on, I look back on Pastor Chris's life and I know kind of the steps of where he went and I know what jobs he had and all that kind of stuff. And we, if, if we were to get him up here and to talk to him about the seeds that were sown in his life, he'd tell us that from study to, to when he was doing athletics, he needed discipline to when he was running UQ Sport, managing UQ Sport, that he needed really great communication skills and people skills. And we could trace so much of his story back to what he is doing today and see how God has just been preparing him and refining him and pruning him to where he is today, where he's just dominating it here. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. But some of, these, some of these moments, guys, where God is refining us, sometimes we, we can't see it right in front of our face, but He's preparing us more and forming us more in the shadow moments of every single day. Maybe you're in a job right now that is, is frustrating you. Have you ever thought maybe God is preparing you? Maybe He's wanting to develop and bring more character inside of you. Maybe some of you in here, just like Joseph's story, there's going to be a day, there's going to be a moment where God exposes you and brings you into the light in front of many people. And you know what? I reckon you're going to be ready. Why are you going to be ready? Because you've been spending time faithfully in the shadows where you, 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 you've been spending time being shaped and molded and curated in behind big leaders or big bosses and whatever. And so you're going to be ready. For some of you, you've been in positions on your knees and you're at the foot of your bed, just praying, going, God, equip me with everything that I need. So when that call and that opportunity comes, I'm going to be ready. Let me tell you, you're going to rise and you're going to soar because of it. But sometimes it takes these, these spaces of us, no, man, even though I'm not where I, where I want to be, I know that God's got me for a, here for a reason. Let's look at the... the uh, the parable of the talents. Matthew 25, right? God gives different gifts to different people. So no matter what you have, use it and steward it. Because it, it, it shows us here in the scripture that everyone will, will receive a reward for what they do with it. The master says this, he says, well done, good and faithful servant. You've been faithful with a few things. So now I'll put you in charge of many things. Now, if I can just trace back to like, I just want to say like, it's not about the spotlight moments, hey? It's not about the spotlight moments. We really have actually no control of whether we are handed a microphone or not. It's up to God on whether He wants to give platform to those or He wants to give influence to those. All we really have control of is being faithful and stewarding with what's in our hand. Hey, So you want to dominate it in your workplace? You want to dominate it in your life group, in ministry, whatever it might be? Read the Bible. It says it's about what you are faithful with. Now I want to hit something real quick. I want to hit leadership hierarchy. Man, that clock is flying. I'll talk about leadership hierarchy real quick, whether it's in your workplace or whether it's in the church here, wherever it might be. I just want to say that there's nothing wrong with being passionate about where you are, about doing a good job, about 
wanting to grow and be stretched and work your way, maybe up the ladder, whatever it might be. But can I tell you, Jesus was really specific and really clear with James and John in Mark 10 about high levels of leadership, high positions of leadership. It's actually reserved for those whose hearts are dedicated to God in the secret place. There's that word again, the secret place. That out of the overflow of your heart, your hunger, your passion, your prayer room, your desires, everyone will actually see your soul's true standing. Everyone will see it right in front of you. I think we need to be better guys and more secure with having a relationship with the shadows in the private space with God though. Because I do believe guys, in due time, I believe you will reap a harvest if you keep doing good. But you know what? I think what happens to so many of us is we miss the harvest or we miss the greatness because we're just too impatient. We get too caught up with maybe where we aren't. And so we're looking at that or maybe we get too busy looking at people around us and we start comparing. And so what do we do? We actually end up losing joy and excitement for where God has us right now in the moment, which takes us away from our purpose. Guys, we got we to gotta allow patience to have its perfect work in us. For some of you, maybe you need to just stop trying to manipulate and, and, and like uh, self-promote and try to weave your, your little place to the top. We you allow God to be your great promoter? Can we allow God to be our great promoter more often? Sometimes I think we need to actually allow God to fight our fights more often. He's really good at it. He is. What does God do, man? He elevates the humble, doesn't he? He elevates the humble and he opposes the proud. End of the day, man, influence in the kingdom of God, it should just be good character. Oh man, that's, that's so good. I've got to say that again. Influence, guys. If you want real influence in the kingdom of God, I'm not talking about this like fabricated, this fake, like I'm going to buy like fake followers, all that type of stuff. I'm talking about real influence in the kingdom of God. It should just be about your character. That's what we should be striving for. Hey, how often do we see people in leadership, influence falling though? Hey, because of a character issue. We see it all too much, don't we? You know, my, my prayer, even just thinking about tonight, my prayer for many of you is just that God would not allow the anointing that He has placed on your life come before the character that He wants to develop in you. Because I don't, I don't want it destroying you. I don't want it destroying me. Because we need to allow patience to have its perfect work in us. Like I said before, some of you guys, you want to be here. You've got a dream to be here. Have you ever thought maybe you're just not ready to be there yet? Maybe God wants to do more. Maybe He wants to refine more so that when you get there, man, you're not going to fall and hurt people. You're going to be ready. You're going to rise and you're going to soar. You hear me? So many of us. Thank you, Maddie. Or Danica, I don't know who said that. So many of us, guys, we lose faith in the journey because I just think we just don't have the patience and perseverance to keep going. And so you know what happens to us? We actually become our own ceiling. We become the very thing that we didn't want to happen to us. Some of you, you guys might see yourselves in the shadows and your job right now is just mundane and boring and invaluable, or you can actually see it as an opportunity and a building block to actually propel you into your future. There's so many more opportunities in the shadows than we realize, guys. You know what? That's where God really sees whether He can trust us or not, right? And real practically, that's where employers can actually see if they can trust you or not. There is so much more meaning in the mundane of every single day. So whether you are pouring coffee you know, at, at Fozzie and Black, man, we all love Fozzie and Black. Shout out Noah over here. We love Foster and Black, right? I spend way too much money and then Noah, get me free coffees or something like that. That'd be great. But whether you're pouring coffee or, or you're in the epicenter of business, law, church, whatever it might be, it's always up to the individual on how invested they are, whether they are seizing the moments, whether they're living in purpose or whether they are just going through the motions just because it's another paycheck. I want to talk about a little distractor, something that repels us from pursuing our faith in the shadows really quickly, okay? I believe it's a word called worldliness. We need to be aware of the lure of worldliness that can seep in and steal our faith and investment in the every single day. What do we need to run from in order to remain faithful, guys? Because worldliness is when you drop or you lose interest in the will of God because A, you don't like where God has you and you don't trust Him, or B, the desires and the pleasures of this world are just screaming so much louder in your ear than the desire to know God, to love God, and to honour God. Worldliness is when you are discontent with what you have and you need something that the world has to offer you that steers you away from the call of God and the purposes on your life. We're going to be so careful here, guys, because look, I do believe God wants to bring joy and reward 
in our every single day in all we do, but with a constant pursuit of worldliness can take away our value of the important things where we then end up losing joy and participating in the kingdom of God. You hear me? Check this scripture out, 1 John 2. It says, The world and its desires pass away, but whoever does the will of God lives forever. Whoever does the will of God lives forever. Guys, the world is so fleeting, isn't it? Look, I, I think God has given us so much in the world to enjoy. It's for our enjoyment. But don't build your life on the desires of the world and the pleasures and the materialistic things that come your way. Build your life on the kingdom of God, man. Build your life on the will of God for your life. You know, I, uh, I was thinking the other day, I kind of wish in the Bible we heard more about Jesus' upbringing, like his youth and young adulthood. Like I wanted to know like, like, did he have a normal upbringing? You know, did he have crushes on people? Did he, did he, did he like, uh, did he make mistakes? Like, did he have a normal life? Because, you know, we hear about Jesus at birth, and then we hear about him at 12 years old, and then we hear about him at 30 when he starts his ministry, right? Do you know where Jesus was in that time? He was just sitting in the shadows. He was in the shadows. What I realized was there was just a whole bunch of shadow moments where God was preparing Jesus, which led him to his purpose to bring salvation and freedom to the world, right? See, Jesus was faithful in the shadows for 18 years before John the Baptist gets up, points him out in the crowd and says, behold the Lamb of God. And boom, in that moment, Jesus steps into the light and an assignment from heaven was set before him. Crazy, right? It reminds me of even just like this, the journey and, and the story of red frogs. Like before we were in nine countries around the world just dominating, do you know where Andy Goulet was, Boss Frog, do you know where he was? He was just cruising around, skating in the shadows with a few teenagers, just looking after a few. That was 25 years ago. Now Red Frogs is one of the biggest movements in some churches across the world and, and senior pastors are telling Andy that it's actually Red Frogs that's keeping their church relevant. <laughs> where did it start though? Faithful shadow moments, guys. It just started in those faithful, small shadow moments, which led to a movement taking place. You know, I think some of you in here, you want to do great things in your workplace. I love that, man. We need you. We need the anointing of God on your life. In fact, if you're actually in here tonight, and I feel like it's a bit of a night for words, Pastor Ruben, but I really felt a couple different spheres tonight that I wanted to pray for. If you are in here and you are pursuing a future in healthcare in our nation, will you just put your hand up real quick? I'm not going to embarrass anyone. We've got a couple awesome. Keep your hand up, please. What about politics and government? Keep your hand up. Healthcare workers, awesome. Future healthcare workers, politics, government, awesome. How about the music industry and the fashion industry? Awesome. We've got a couple. Great. Do you guys mind just standing with me real quick? I just really felt to pray for you guys. I'm not going to embarrass anyone. I just really felt to pray. Yeah, give them a hand. I don't know why I felt these spaces on my heart tonight, but I just really felt the pray for you guys. Because these spaces can be tough, hey. They can be tough. And I don't have heaps of experience in them, but I know that we need Christians in these spaces. Guys, we need you bold. We need you courageous. We need you shining the light of the gospel in these spheres. I felt for some of you guys tonight, I just felt like you were watching your friends. You were just watching your friends dominate their lane, make a difference in their world. And I felt like God says, I want you in the fight with me. I want you in the game. I want you to come play a part. He's just going to start. He's going to start something big with you guys. I believe it because you're missing some moments right now in the shadows. I felt for some of you too, I felt like some of you disqualified yourselves. You felt like God only wants to use the, the qualified or the put together or the holy Christians, whatever that means. I think that's bad theology. Okay, don't disqualify yourself. God wants to use you. He wants to use you in your workplace. I don't know if some of you guys are in high school still or you know, some of you guys are at uni or maybe some of you guys are already in the workplace, but I really felt to pray for you guys tonight. Church, can we just extend our hand if you're next to somebody right now? Let's pray for these guys. Hey, Father, I thank you so much for every single soul standing in front of me, God. I thank you that you have a perfect plan for their lives and the space that you want them to be, God. Will you empower them with your spirit, God? Will you bring boldness over them, Father? Will you remind them, that every day is a day to bring you glory and a day to, see, to be seized, God. God, we pray for supernatural interventions to take place. We pray for supernatural moments where they can share the light of the gospel in their lane, God. We pray for supernatural strategy. God, we pray for uh, innovations and strategies from heaven to come down, God. 
We pray for open opportunities in the shadows to be unlocked where they can make your name known, not their name known, God, but your name known. God, we pray for boldness and courage and faith. And God, we just declare a move of God to take place in the healthcare of our nation. We pray for a move of God to take place in the government of our nation. Would you protect and would you go before the leaders and the future leaders to come? God, we pray for the music industry and the fashion industry, new records to come out, new artists, new labels, God, where they wanna bring you glory above everything else. God, we proclaim this and we declare this in your mighty name. We pray for faith and character. Like I said before, God, I pray that the anointing You place on their heads, God, will character come first. Will character come first? God, we pray for faith and Your Spirit to empower them. In Jesus' mighty Name, Amen. Amen. You can be seated. Let's give it up for these amazing people. Use them, Lord. Use them. I'm just going to close now, but one thing I just wanted to leave with you guys was, you know, one of you guys told me a few weeks ago, you said you felt like the enemy has been trying to ruin your every day by trying to steal your joy. And you said that, um, um, oh, I didn't think that'd get me. You said that every day you said that you've been waking up and you've just been going, Holy Spirit, I thank you that in you is joy. In you there is peace, in you there is purpose. And he said that ever since, ever since that day, you said that everything's changed. You felt like God's been with you. God's been closer. God's been working in some of the small moments in your every day, which is bringing you purpose in your day, which is just, man, it encouraged me so much. It encouraged me so much because I understand for some of us, it can be hard, man, waking up with purpose in your every day. I understand it can be tough. But I really felt to remind some of us in here that God is so much closer than we know. God was with Joseph in the highs and the lows of every single day. His hand was upon him and went before him. And for some of you guys in here, man, God's hand is upon you. It is with you, it is going before you. Don't lose heart, don't lose heart. I know I've been talking a lot tonight about some shadow moments that have been taking place, how God can use you in your every day. But guys, it's not okay for us just to leave tonight and just go, oh yeah, I'm just gonna go home. I'm just gonna look for some of those moments. Now you know where it's gotta start. It's got to start with you going into your room, door closed, you and God. Private devotion to know Him, to actually know Him. Jesus isn't returning for those who just lift their hands up really well in church each week. He's returning for those who know Him. I want to pray for some people tonight who don't know Jesus in here. And I want to pray for some of us in here tonight who maybe want that faith and that excitement, that joy again again in the mundane of just knowing God in the quiet. I want to pray for us some of us tonight. Maybe you're in here and yeah, you don't know Jesus or you don't know Him like the way I've been talking about Him tonight. Maybe you wanna learn more about Him. Maybe you wanna learn more about what He's done for you on the cross by setting you free, by giving you purpose, joy, peace in your every single day. What I want you to do in just a moment is I just want you to slip up your hand so I can see it and so I can pray for you and so we can celebrate with you. I'm not gonna embarrass anyone in this moment. This is just about you and God. And you know what? Romans tells us that when we confess with our mouth and we believe in our heart that Jesus is Lord, that we will be saved. So right now across the place, you guys can just shut your eyes really quickly. This is a moment just between you and God. And you know what? Maybe you feel distant from God. Maybe you felt like you've been running from Him. Maybe you feel like He's drawing you back tonight. Maybe you just wanna start that relationship. You wanna rekindle that relationship with Him again tonight and just have a fresh start with Him. He's not looking for perfect people. He's looking for available ones. And He just wants to know you tonight. So with all eyes closed, if you wanna receive Jesus, you wanna receive salvation tonight and just start a relationship with God again. Will you put up your hand right now so that I can see that? Awesome, I see that hand. Awesome, I see that hand. Awesome, I see that hand. Mate, see that hand at the back left as well. I see the hand at the back, awesome. Amazing, amazing. You can put your hands down. Church, let's give it up one more time. Let's celebrate, man. Happy birthday. Today is a new day. You get to start again and knowing Jesus, man. Let me pray for you. Father, I thank you so much for these incredible souls that have surrendered to you today, that have said, you are Lord, not just of some of my life, you are Lord of all. God, today, let the old be gone and let the new start afresh with you, Father. Will you pour out your Spirit upon them? 
Will you pour out your peace, your purpose, your joy in the every single day again, God? But will you fill them afresh? Pour out your love on their lives too, Father God. And will you purify their hearts? Place them around people who are gonna help them grow in the things of you, God. I thank you. I thank you for what you've done tonight. We thank you for your Word, God. We thank You that all of heaven rejoices with us, God, and we celebrate too. Church, one more time, can we celebrate these incredible people? Come on, will you stand with me to your feet really quickly? Just as I close, I wanna just leave you with this. Can you imagine what our city would look like, guys, if we truly took our eyes off of ourselves a little bit more in the everyday and believed that God could use us in the shadows and the mundane? Can you believe how we could influence our world for good and for God through Monday through Saturday if we truly believe that God could move in the shadows and if we were wide awake to the call that He's got on our lives? Man, He is good. Own your lane. You guys are ambassadors in the Kingdom of God. Hey, just before we jump to a praise, you wanna pray for these guys real quick too. Hey, just lift your hands like this if you wanna receive this prayer right now and you feel comfortable. Father, I thank You for these legends in here. I thank You for the Word that You have spoken, God. Would You remind us, God, that there is more opportunity in the shadows Would you remind us that your Holy Spirit is so good. He's with us constantly, God, and there's more that we can do when we're looking and available. Father, I pray for those in the room tonight who want a fresh joy and passion and excitement to get away with you in the quiet again. God, will you bring new fervour to that space, new fervour to that. In fact, Holy Spirit, right now, would you just draw us all closer to you? Would you draw us all nearer to you? God, we long to be with You. We long to know You more. We long to love You. Jesus, You are the greatest prize. You are the greatest investment and time of our devotion. God, we love You and we thank You for what You've spoken tonight. In Jesus' Name, Amen. Amen. Guys, can we honour God with the Word tonight one more time?